Jesus. Yeah, I just feel like the Father wants to restore joy tonight. I just want to declare this over every person here. This is Psalm 126. And just put your hand just in on your heart just to receive or wherever it feels comfortable. And these are more than just words on a page. This is declaration. This is truth. This is bringing freedom. It says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our capti captivity, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him. And so, Father, we just thank you that any pain, any, any tears that you're redeeming, and we declare tonight that you're bringing restoration to your people. We thank you that all the tears that were, that were dropped, they were right in your hand, and you're redeeming it for joy. And so, God, we just declare the word of God over your people tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I, I even declare, even as people drive home tonight, there would just be the joy of the Lord would just overwhelm them. That this would be a new season of joy and laughter and rejoicing and, and, and dancing. Yeah, God, we just thank you. You were anointed with joy above all of your companions. And so, God, you're the king of joy. You are joy, actually. You are joy. And so we thank you for every person, no matter what situation they're in, that you're the God of joy. And so God, we just thank you right now. We just declare just a double portion of joy for every person here and even the family members represented that they, they would feel a shift tonight. And we bless whoever sneezed with double joy too. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's give it up for the Lord and for the worship team. Cool. Does anyone have a testimony about financial breakthrough blessing just recently? Yeah, Melinda, do you want to share that? Okay, so, um, yeah, during COVID, um, I was furloughed from my job, and I applied for unemployment, and I didn't receive it at all. I think I filled it out wrong, so they should really help you out with that. <laughs> so then for about three months, I wasn't, I didn't receive any pay at all, but for some reason, I also never ran out of money, and I was still able to like give, which was crazy. Um, but then just this past week, I found out that I am going to receive unemployment and receive all this back pay, which is amazing. So I'm like, wow, I don't, I don't know, but that's what happened. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for well, God, we just thank you that you're the provider. And God, we just thank you for financially blessing every person here with over, over and abundantly above we could ever ask or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, Bob, here you go. Awesome, thank you. All right, praise God. Yeah. Woo. Amen. Well, welcome to Sunday night, Pearl Chapel. You are in the right place. I'm in the right place, I think. Yes, so this is good. It's Father's Day. Did you know that? Okay, raise your hand if you have a father. That's almost all of you. That's good. That's a trick question. It's a trick question. All right, well, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for uh, the word. I pray that the word would be like an arrow, and you'd shoot that arrow, and it would hit its target. Lord God, it hit our soul wherever you want it to go, whatever you want it to do. Lord, let the word of God do, do the work. We honor the word. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence here. We thank you. You're a shepherd. You shepherd your people. You lead us, Lord God, where you want us to go. We, uh, when you have a shepherd and you have sheep, 
The sheep aren't responsible for themselves. The shepherd is, takes full responsibility for the well-being. If one of the sheep gets lost, it's the shepherd's fault. That's how the business works. And so, Lord God, we know you use that analogy with purpose because you are taking that kind of responsibility over your people. We are the sheep of your pasture, Lord God. And we say that you are ever watchful for us. You are guarding us. You are protecting us, Lord God. We thank you for that. The angels are in charge of keeping us protected. Your servants, flames of fire, are, are, are watching over us. And we just thank you for that. And uh, we just thank you, Lord. Open our eyes to the spiritual realm. What is happening, Lord God? Give us understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Awesome. Well, um, I am going to talk about Father's Day today. But last week, I want to talk about what, uh, just review a little bit of that. We talked about our unwavering commitment to hold on to the truth. That as witnesses, we are to hold on to the truth in a, even if it costs our life, no matter what the cost, we are to hold on to the truth. That's what the power of God will make us witnesses. And that word witness is martis, which is a surprise. But the power of God causes us to be a witness to the truth, at whatever the cost is, even if it costs us our life. That's why the word martis is used there. And uh, when we do that, when we hold fast to the truth, even at the cost of our lives, it serves to draw undecided multitudes into the presence of God. It forces a decision. And one of the worst things humanity can do is just be in a place of undecision. Because God said, hey, why don't you just be cold? Why don't you just be hot? But because you're lukewarm, you will not decide. You stand in the middle as if that's okay. Then that's not okay. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. We need to help people move to one side or the other. That's what the church is there. That's what the church is here for. And when we hold on to the truth, even at the cost of our lives, that, that it actually motivates people to make a choice to move. It motivates Christians to get bold. Here's a great verse I should have used last week, but I found it this week, and so I think I'll share it. Philippians 1:14. Paul says, "Because of my chains." Most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Isn't that remarkable? Because of my chains, because I have taken a cost of my own life to stand for the gospel, this has had an effect on people. People that were just kind of like, you know, la, 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 la. No, it's caused them to be bold and encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. That's remarkable. So when we stand and we become a testimony that, God, that we're going to stand for the truth no matter what, it causes people to be bold, our fellow Christians. That's a powerful, powerful thing. Amen. So we are going to be people that love the truth. We are going to be people that hold fast to the truth. We are not going to waver from the truth no matter what the cost is. Am I right? And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Today I'm going to talk about the Father's love. I'm going to talk about, I want to talk about the three different expressions of love that we see from God, the Spirit, the Son, and the Father. And uh, I think the, one of the best analogies I can think of is if a wounded child came into the home, then because of an enemy attack, so the, the, the little kid comes in and says, an enemy attacked me. There's three, kind of love, there's three kinds of love that could be shown to the child in that moment, Okay. One kind of love says, I am going to heal you and comfort you. And this is the Holy Spirit's kind of love. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will bring all things to remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. This is the Comforter's job, is to comfort us in our time of need. I'm going to send the Comforter, Jesus said. And that Comforter is a, a tremendous uh, benefit to us because it causes us to feel secure in God. So we come in wounded from the war, he's going to comfort us. Yeah. This is one of the kinds of love the child will get in the home. There's another kind of love that the child will get in the home. And one kind, another kind of love says, listen, in whatever you do, I'm going to stand with you. So you're not going to have to go out there alone. I'm going to be with you. 
This is the way Jesus loves us. He says in Matthew 28, 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely, as you're going out in this dangerous world, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is like a brother, somebody who sticks closer than a brother. It's like, I'm going to be with you. You say, I'm not going to leave you alone anymore. I'm going to be with you. Okay, this is like Jesus being our elder brother. That's cool. And there's a different kind of love. I'm just trying to show these aspects of how the family would function. Because all of them represent a kind of love that God is giving towards us. There's another kind of love that says, I'm going to put an end to your enemy. And this is the Father's love, I believe. Isaiah 42, 13, the Lord will march out like a mighty man, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal with a shout. He will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. This kind of love that the father has wants to take care of the problem so that it never happens again. It's like, I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to love you. This is never going to happen again. And I think that's kind of like the father. He's like, grabs the gun. He's like, I'm going to go shoot those guys because that's never gonna happen to my kids again, right? So all these are love. These are all love, all of it's love. Love, love, love. I had, a, I had an experience, anybody in, in, had a sozo? I've had one or two sozos. Raise your hand if you've had a sozo. It's a counseling thing where you experience God. It's kind of a guided thing, it's really powerful. I, when I think back of my Sozo, I can't really think. I always think, was that a dream? Oh, no. Or was that an open vision? Or No, 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 no. That was a Sozo. Because it, it, it's like the category of a of highly prophetic interaction that you're having with God. So anyway, I just want to tell you this one part of this Sozo that I had. So the guy, so we're like, have Jesus take you to the Father. So we're like, okay, Jesus, come on, let's go to the Father. So we go up to the throne. And, uh, and Jesus is the friendliest guy you will ever meet. I actually met him in a dream, and his name was Johnny Cash, and he was so friendly. And he's, he's, I'm like, people are going to freak out when they realize we're friends because you're famous. And then, and then he's showing me all this property and stuff. I'm like, I told Tammy, Tammy, I had a great dream. I mean, I was really good friends with Johnny Cash. And she, had, she said, Johnny Cash, JC, that was Jesus. I'm like, oh, boy. It was so powerful because that's exactly the kind of love of, of like so close, so tight, so like, ah, we're such good friends. I can't believe you're my friend because you're famous, but you're my friend. So anyway, that's another story. So we were going to the throne and Jesus got up there and, and he got up on the father's lap. And then he, he, he said, come on, come on, come with, come up here. And he, and he patted on the father's legs for me to, because God's big. Okay, I mean, not like as big as I thought. I'm just talking about my Sozo. This is my brain, okay? But he was only like as tall as that, you know, so I could like get up and sit on his lap, you know. He'd be up there. Or no, not that big. Anyway, gosh, I'm really <laughs> rambling. Um, so I, I get up there, and then I'm like touching the father's face, and it's like, whoa, this is really awesome. And, and then it's like, I, I said, God, would you hold me? And the father picked me up and held me like a baby. And I like, that doesn't, f and we both are like, that doesn't, doesn't feel right. It's like, don't do that. So I got down. <laughs> it was, we just both knew, no, 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 that's not okay. And so I got down, I stood beside him, and I just held him like this. And it's like, that's not right either. That, that doesn't feel right either. And I think you know where I'm going, but I didn't get this until months later. I didn't get the connection. So I stood on his, on his knees, and he grabbed me by the arms like this. And he lifted me up, and he looked in my face. <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh. Face to face. This is, this is what? This is really, really good. This is so good. And... Uh, so I'm like, that was nice. I wrote my sozo down, best I can remember it. And honestly, it must have been nine months later, I thought, the comforter holds us like this, and we love it. Jesus, 
Jesus walks with us like this, and I love it. But with the Father, my whole identity is wrapped up in Him, and it's a face-to-face encounter. So the love of the Father is like, I'm holding you. I'm, you're in my hands. And I'm like, whoa, those all represented the love of God in different ways. The Father's love is different than the other loves. And so I'm just gonna, I just want to talk about the kind of the way we interact with the, the Trinity and the Godhead, okay? So that's cool. Um, the growth and progress of the church. I want to talk about that. The church thrives in the love of the Holy Spirit's comfort. Okay, Acts 9.31, we see this. So I'm going to go through this progression. Acts 9.31, so the church throughout all Judea and, and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. So it was a comfort of increase. It was a point of growing the church. And there was the Holy Spirit's work there. Cool. So it was the love of the Holy Spirit. And the church grows in the truth and love of Jesus. Ephesians 4.15 says this, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. Okay, so we got the love of the Holy Spirit working to build the church. We got the love of Jesus that we are growing in. But I want you to look at this. The love, I want you to look at the love that Jesus reveals. The love that Jesus reveals is a radiance of something else, okay? We're going to look at this in Hebrews 1.3. What Jesus radiates is is a radiance of something else. In Hebrews 1.3, it says, The Son is the radiance and the only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine, and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his Father's essence. That's the amplified version. So Jesus is radiating the love of God. He's radiating the Father's love. He's trying to express to us what the Father is. Okay? After we come to Jesus, he wants to take us somewhere. Okay? After... I think this is really cool. After we come to Jesus, and and this is always our first step. We come to Jesus. We come to the foot of the cross. Jesus, you're my way of salvation. After we come to Jesus, Jesus wants to take us somewhere. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is a bridge that's taking us somewhere. Okay, when they build a br- they spend millions of dollars to build a bridge, you don't get on the bridge and just, you appreciate the bridge, but you don't kiss the bridge and say, yay, I love you, bridge, which we love the bridge. But the bridge says back, hey, I'm here to take you somewhere. Okay, I, I, I'm just going to throw that out. Listen, the Bible talks about this. Hebrews 4.14, we do have Jesus. Hebrews 4.14 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. So we have Jesus. So now, since we have Jesus, we can approach the throne. And it says in 16, Let us then approach the throne of grace and confidence. Since we have Jesus, now let us approach the throne of grace and confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. The reason we came to Jesus was so we could go to the Father. Hello? Which is kind of like, huh. I think that's kind of a new idea sometimes. Jesus says that after salvation, he wants us connecting directly to the Father. Okay, this is, this is an amazing verse. John 16, 26. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. He's saying, listen, after you have salvation through me, I want you to connect directly to the Father God. Isn't that interesting? 
It's like, Jesus, why don't you just keep being my intercessor? I like that. I like that. And he says, listen, you guys are going to connect with the Father directly because I've been a bridge, and that bridge was to take you somewhere. That bridge is to connect you yourself with the Father because there's nothing like the love of him grabbing you by the shoulders and looking right into his face, face to face. I mean, you can walk side by side with Jesus, your mediator, for all, your whole life, and it's not the full completion of knowing the Father's love directly. Hello? Because they have different characteristics of love. They just have different things. And I'm telling you, you need the love of the Father. We all need the love of the Father. It's, it's the powerful, powerful thing. We are to go straight to the Father for ourselves. We're supposed to get to the point where we go straight to the Father for ourselves. John 16, 23. Listen to what Jesus says. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Haven't you always wondered, what? Why do you say that, Jesus? Never mind. I'm just going to pray to Jesus. He's like, come on, man. You need the love of the Father. And you don't even know it. You need the love of the Father. And you don't even know it. So why don't you just take this bridge I'm the bridge. You love the bridge. I'm beautiful. Of course I am. I'm, I'm everything you ever wanted. Now, what, why don't you walk across and see what the Father has? Because wow, wow, wow. There's something there that you haven't experienced in the Father's presence. That's cool. That is cool. So it is Jesus' great joy. Okay, this may be a new idea to you that Jesus wants us to come to the Father, he wants us to continue our journey, you know. I mean, we're always going to, he's always going to, whatever. But, but this is Jesus' purpose. Jesus' great joy is to bring all people and all creation to the Father. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm really, I'm really hot on the Amplified this week, Amplified thing. So we're going to look at this in the Amplified. 1 Corinthians 15, 27. For the Father has put all things in subjection under Christ's feet. But when he says all things have been put in subjection under Christ, it is clear that the Father who put all things in subjection to Christ is accepted since the Father is not in subjection to his own Son. However, when all things are subjected to Christ, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the Father who put all things under him so that God may be all in all, manifesting his glory without any opposition, the supreme indwelling and controlling factor of life. This is Jesus' great pleasure to bring everything to the Father. He's not, he, he doesn't have any, does any <laughs> competitive heart about the love that he's receiving from hum humanity. He wants to bring it all to the Father so that the Father can be fully glorified. That's what he's going to do with all of creation. Not just us, but all of creation. Bring it all back to the Father because we need to connect with the Father. <laughs> I think that's amazing. We need to connect to the Father. We need to realize the Father is the goal. Jesus paid a huge price not to just bring people to himself so that he could bring them to himself and then bring them to the Father. Cat yeah. uh, Kerr. How many have ever heard of Cat Kerr? Come on, you guys. You need to go to her website and lock, watch all those five-minute videos she has about going to heaven. Anyway, I don't know where it is because I, I spent a long time trying to find this, but she said in a book or something, video, I can't, couldn't find it. She said, when you get to heaven... Jesus is escorting you around, showing you, and he is like, I can't wait to take you to the Father. Here, here's what we got to, come on, I can't wait, you've got to meet the Father. This is, this is the most exciting thing. And it's like, why are you so excited to, for me to meet the Father? I wish I could have found the place where she said it. But because that's the whole point. You connecting with the Father. You've never met any love until you've met the Father's love. You haven't connected to the love that you I mean, you, you have a certain kind of comfort, and you, kind of, you have a com camaraderie with Jesus, but there is a full completion in the love of the Father that we have to have, that we are hungry for.
Yes, Jesus is so excited to get us to the Father. There's nothing more encompassing and far-reaching as the quality of the Father's love. 1 John 3, 1. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us, that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God, and so we are. So that's powerful. All right, so I'm going to talk about where we can start. Where can we start to understand the love of the Father? Well, here's where we can start. You can start by recognizing who is a father in your life, okay? Because if you wanted to know the comfort of the Holy Spirit, you'd probably want to know about how a mother loves a baby because that's the best picture of the, love, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know, if you wanted to know how Jesus is going to love us, you would probably want to know the love of a loyal brother because that's kind of the way Jesus loves us. But so if you wanted to know the love of the Father you need to recognize who are spiritual fathers in your life because through that, you're going to understand what the, it's going to be revealed to you through that. So we need to recognize who is a father in your life. Listen to 1 Corinthians 4.15. Even though you have 10,000 guardians, a guardian is a leader or, in, or an instructor, so even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father. And the word father means to procreate, to begat, to bring forth, to conceive. He says, I became your father through the gospel. So Paul is saying, listen, guys, you have 10,000 teachers, but you have one father. And I want, you to, I want you to honor that because there's something of value in honoring that I'm a father spiritually to you. You guys cool with this? Mm -hmm. So Paul is totally admonishing them, recognize that I'm your father in, in, in spiritual things. Because to recognize the person who had a part in begatting you or bringing you or, or bringing the gospel to you or whatever has a purpose that, that you're not going to get from any other leader. Cool? It's a rare relationship. It's one out of 10,000. It's going to be one out of 10,000. It's probably just going to be only one <laughs> in your whole life that is a father to you. And... Not only recognize who your father is in life, who, who is a father to you. You know, if you got, um, if you got uh, put up for adoption and you got an adopted father, that would be your father. Somebody who act like a father to you. Okay? Not your biological one. You don't have to chase that your whole life. The one God gave you. That's your spiritual father. Paul was their spiritual father. Okay, so I don't need to go on and on with that. And after you recognize your father, you need to learn to honor your father. Ephesians 6, 2, honor, esteem, value is precious, your father and your mother, and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may have a long life on the earth. So that's incredible. So now, once you recognize who your spiritual father is or who your father is, then you need to honor because there's a connection with that. There's a connection. Because they represent something all other people can't. They represent the Father. And nobody else can represent the Father except a Father to you. <laughs> Recognizing fathers here will bring a revelation of the Heavenly Father. Okay, I want to show you a verse that says that very thing. I, here, I'm going to make the statement. Recognizing fathers here will bring a revelation of the Heavenly Father. Look what 1 John 4.20 says. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he can see cannot love God whom he has not seen. It's like, I love God the Father, but I hate my dad. This verse says no. This verse says no. If you, <laughs> shall I read it again? Anyone who does not love his brother who he can see cannot love God whom he has not seen. And so I'm not saying your dad is a great person, but you have to honor the source of your life. You have to honor the, the, the one who uh, begat, who brought you forth. And that, there's a place of honor, whether they're a scoundrel or not, is like, I honor that. Okay, this is why we honor Israel. Israel is the source of salvation. Jesus came from Israel. 
even if they're all scoundrels, they are the source. And honor is due for the exact same reason we honor our parents. Does that make sense to you guys? <laughs> that is a good analogy. And so you, we honor not because they're good, but because they're the source. And we honor them at the same level that the source deserves honor. God is the source of our life. We honor him at that level too. So anyway, that's why we honor our parents. And we have to learn to honor our spiritual fathers as the source uh, so that we can also understand God as the source of all things. Cool? So what is understood in the natural is understood in the spiritual. Oh, yeah. All right. We may have great leaders, but it's the, it's the Father's pres presence that brings family unity. And Ephesians 3.14 says this, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. When Once we get, I, I believe the church in the last days is going to start understanding the love of the Father. I think it's going to bring in a, a powerful, powerful uh, revival. I think it's going to bring power in the church. I, I, believe, I believe it's going to bring anointing of the Holy Spirit and, and the works of the Holy Spirit and healings like never before, manifestations of the love of God like never before. And, it's, and, it, and it comes because it's going to put a family feeling between all of us because we kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. We share a name because of the Father, because we worship the Father. We kneel before the Father. And as we are a united family, we will experience the anointing. If we were just a united group of people, we would not experience the anointing. But if we are a united family, we will experience the anointing. Proof in Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. This is people that have the same father, that you've met the father, you've met the father, you've met the father, you've met the father, you've met the father. Met the father. Everyone has been held by the father and looked, and, and our identity has been burnt straight into our soul by him holding on to us. And because we all have met the father, we are brothers. How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. This is the anointing of God. This is life. This is Mount Zion, which is a picture of the heavenly kingdom, the Mount Zion. And that's what happens when brothers dwell together underneath the Father's identity. And that is a powerful thing. All of it comes is because we're coming to the Father. All that happens because we come to the Father. And so, let your spiritual... You know, uh, you can't be saved unless you interact with the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said that. Don't, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit because he's the one that's like bringing you. Come on, come on. And then when we get... The Holy Spirit brings us to Jesus. And then Jesus, like, yes, yes, yes. And then he brings us to the Father. Don't let the progression stop. Okay, we love the bridge. We love Jesus. He's the Savior. And, and man, we can worship Jesus all day long. And I've probably spent my, most of my life worshiping Jesus, exalting the name of Jesus. Because he's King of kings and Lord of lords. He's powerful. He's awesome. But man, let him bring us to the Father. Because there's something there. I don't know what, but let's all find out together. Let's let the Father's anointing hit us. Come, come upon the church and rise us. Amen? Well, let's stand up and let's pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, we, we just, we thank you for your, uh, for your awesome, awesome love. Father, we thank you for your fantastic, amazing love. Help us to know every different aspect of the love that comes from the Trinity, Lord God, because we do not want to neglect any of it. We need all of it. Oh man, no matter how, no matter how far we get, we, we need the comfort of the Holy Spirit every day. And we need you, Jesus, to be with us, never to leave us. But man, we want to we want to also understand the love of the Father. We want to be brought into the great love of the identity of God, looking at us and saying, I'm 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 yours. You belong to me. 
And so help us to grow in your love in all ways, Lord God. Father, keep drawing us to yourself. You are the destination of all creation. And so we boldly come to you under your feet, under your authority, through the blood of Jesus. And help us to recognize and honor, Father, you, uh, the fathers that you have given us. Help us to understand and recognize the fathers you have put in our lives, Lord God, so that we can better understand your character. Bring us individually and bring the entire church into the fullness and power of unity found in your love. So, Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you. We love you so much.